Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you all here. So a lot of times in the previous videos, we have talked about sequencing depth, but I've never explained what sequencing depth is. So in this video, I want to talk about sequencing depth and a lot of associated terms like coverage, depth of coverage, sequencing depth. So we'll be talking about all of that in detail in today's video. So before we talk about sequencing depth, um, what I want to talk about first is coverage. So coverage is a measure of redundancy. So it's the average number of reads that align or cover a known reference at a particular location. Because uh, sequencing is error prone, um, higher coverage is used to increase the confidence in the basis score. So if each nucleotide is sequenced multiple times, the base call shared by the majority of the reads will reflect the correct nucleotide. So sequencing more reads will uh, increase the power. So more sequencing more reads will add more confidence to the base call and also improves the chances of uh, covering rare events. Uh, so deeper the sequencing, the more robust the results are. So now that we know what coverage is, um, you might have heard the term depth of coverage. So when they say depth of coverage, uh, one usually means the average number of reads at a particular location. Now, depth of coverage also have other names, uh, which is sequencing depth, or sometimes it's called read depth, or sometimes just called depth. So when they say depth of coverage, they usually mean the average number of reads at a particular location. You also might have heard the term breadth of coverage. And breadth of coverage is nothing, but it's a percentage of the target basis um, that is covered by the reads uh, compared to the reference sequence. So basically out of the reference sequence, all the bases in the reference sequence, how many bases are covered by the reads. You will also notice that um, the depth of coverage is not always uniform. So there are certain areas in a reference sequence that have higher coverage compared to the other. So whenever we talk about a coverage value, it's usually an average value. So to give you an example, um, if we say a genome has a 10x coverage, we mean that each base has been sequenced 10 times on average. Coverage can be calculated for the whole genome. Um, it can be calculated for one locus or one nucleotide position. So on the genome basis, we usually talk about um, the coverage as 10x, 20x, or 100x uh, in terms of how many times a base has been sequenced on average. But if you're talking about one uh, specific nucleotide, then that represents the number of reads that is overlapping that position. So if you want to calculate coverage, you can use this lander waterman equation, which uh, calculates coverage using the length of the reads, the number of the reads, and the length of the genome. To give you an example of how to calculate coverage, uh, let's say, for example, here we have a genome of length 20 nucleotides, and we have five reads, and each read has a length of eight nucleotides. Then if you use this equation, um, you can get the coverage for uh, this genome. So for this genome, the coverage is 2x, which is um, each base has been sequenced at least to, uh, has been sequenced twice on average. Um, but if you're calculating the coverage for one locus or one region, then we can still use this lander waterman equation where if we can use um, the length of the region that is 10 nucleotides. So here, um, the coverage for that 10 nucleotide locus is 4x. And when we're calculating for the coverage for one nucleotide position, then we can simply calculate the number of reads that is overlapping that position. And from the example here, we can see that the position of interest has a coverage of 5x. Coverage will vary depending on the type of the next generation sequencing data and the research application. Um, usually more coverage is used when one is trying to identify a, a variant that is less common. Uh, one example for that would be detection of cancer mutations in um, tumor circulating DNA in the plasma of cancer patients. Uh, however, the appropriate coverage for an experiment is determined uh, on a case-to-case -case basis. So the coverage also varies depending on the next generation sequencing type of data. That is whether the data is a whole genome sequencing data, whether it's an exome sequencing data, whether it's chip sequencing or whether it's RNA sequencing. Uh, for RNA sequencing, the number of reads requires, uh, required depends on the genome size, um, the number of known genes and transcript. 
So generally, it is recommended to have 5 to 10 million reads per sample for small genomes like bacteria and 20 to 30 million reads per sample for large uh, genomes uh, like human or mouse. So one can decide to sequence more uh, if one is trying to um, investigate very rare events or sequencing hard to sequence regions. Uh, however, there is no general guideline for determining the optimal coverage for a sequencing project. It highly depends on the type of the experiment, the species, the input material, the sequencing platform, the goal of the analysis, and a lot of other factors. So here we are visualizing uh, some reads um, that are aligned to a part of the genome in IGV, that is Integrated Genomics Viewer. And each uh, segment here is essentially a read and the direction of the read tells us which way the read is aligned to, um, to the genome. And the coverage can be visualized in pink here. So you can see that there are certain regions that have higher coverage compared to the others. So basically you can use a genomics viewer like IGV to visualize your aligned reads and coverage. Besides visualizing your reads and coverage in IGV, one can also calculate coverage and generate coverage metrics using your BAM files. So um, there are various tools uh, that are available that can calculate coverage. But uh, one example that I'm going to use today is SAM tools. So essentially, there are two functions in SAM tools that you can use to calculate coverage and generate coverage metrics. The first one is SAM tools coverage, which is used to generate a histogram or a table of coverage for each chromosome or for your region of interest. And in addition to calculating the coverage, it also tells you the percentage of the bases covered, um, the mean base quality and mapping quality. It requires the input as a BAM file and it will uh, output this histogram with the coverage metrics. In addition to that, there is another function called SAM tools depth, which can calculate depth at each position. So again, it requires the input as BAM files and at each position in a chromosome, it will output the number of reads that are aligned at that position. So basically it will give you the depth at each position um, in a BAM file. So this was a short video on what is sequencing depth or rather coverage and talking about what is sequencing depth, uh, what is the recommended um, sequencing depth for various next generation sequencing data. Uh, visualizing the coverage and finally calculating the coverage using the aligned reads. So if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.